All right, next question. All right, here we go. Pentibot on Instagram wants to know this, since you guys were talking about the different uh, types of light in the spectrum. Uh, what is the difference between Chandra X-ray Observatory and James Webb Telescope? Is it just the spectrum of light, or what, what else do they do that is different? Let's start out with the orbit. So what sure, orbit sure. is Chandra in? Um, so Chandra's in a highly elliptical orbit that goes about a third of the way to the moon. Um, Chandra's about the size of a school bus. It weighs maybe 4,800 kilograms, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and On Earth. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Very important detail. On the moon, it weighs one sixth yeah. of that. You know, actually, okay. interesting thing about Chandra is it was, I'm pretty sure, still was the heaviest thing that the space shuttle ever launched. Really? And wow. the fact that it was so massive um, meant that, and I didn't actually learn this until many years later, um, the fact that it was so massive meant that it was a, a more riskier ride for the astronauts than it mm. would have been with a lighter payload. Right. Um, their abort scenarios, for example, were uh, more challenging, um, but I didn't know that at the time. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So Chandra was large and in charge, and it was like fortunately it. perfect. Large Everything and went in charge. Perfect to get it up into space. Thanks and to And so astronauts. that's that orbit. And so James Webb is a million miles on the other side of the moon. Right. So they want that away from Earth interference. Right. Yep. Uh, so James Webb is an infrared based telescope. And again, different parts of the spectrum with yeah. tuned differently. And so they have their targets. Um, of interest, their objects of affection in the universe are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then you bring them all together and you get the right. full. The, the so full now picture. you mentioned the orbits. This is a question coming from uh, Chuck Nice on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Chuck Nice, Chuck in Nice person. here in the office. <laughs> well, wait, let me just comment about. Uh, I, I say something a little more about James Webb. Go ahead. Uh, so, so Chandra is in this big elliptical orbit. So it's orbiting Earth. Yep. James Webb is in a Lagrangian point. Ah. It is a point where all forces that would otherwise move it are stable. Right. And so you put it out there and it takes very little station keeping to just keep it there. And this is the uh, fa these famous Lagrangian points are where we imagined you'd build stuff. Right. Because you just get all your hardware, just, just load leave it, it there. Right. You leave it just there. And it just hang around. Just, just hang. It's right. the garbage patch of it's the a, solar it's what system. It is. It, it'll collect it. Right. I need a, a, a bolt or a screw. There it is. Right. It's just, just floating right by. Right, hangs right there. It's, it doesn't fall to anybody's right. surface. Yeah. So they would imagine to be a little more useful than they've turned out to be. It turns out we can make things that are orbiting. It's not that hard. Because once you bring something up into orbit, it orbits with, with it. With you. Yeah, right. yeah. So right. it's not. But uh, anyhow. Although I do love the Lagrangian point, like as as a as a place like it's you know it's a cool name it's yeah. a total cool you know, name yeah. right exactly Lagrange. Yeah. Lagrange. Yeah. Le 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 <laughs> 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 all right so now let me ask you this okay as these as these orbits happen are they uh are they st staying on a fixed point or are they observing different quadrants as they move around so Chandra goes um, a third of the way to the moon at its farthest point, and okay. then goes about 16,000 kilometers to Earth at its closest point. So it's this nice elliptical orbit. And it's got, they did that for like optimal observing capability so that it has okay. the most time to essentially be looking out at the universe. Gotcha. Um, but you know. Far away from Earth. Far away from yeah. Earth, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, but yeah, I think what's really interesting about, well, for one thing, I think it must have gone like 2.7 billion miles, I mean, kilometers by now, over 20 years, which is, mm -hmm. I think, fantastic. And you think about it, like Chandra's never had a day off in like 20 years doesn't even have like an hour she off works hard anything. for them right i know <laughs> and how perfect that had to work when it was launched so anyways but i'm, I'm not sure what james webb is doing but right so well it's not up yet of course well, right at, sure. at, at the when time of this broadcast yes but so uh these these things have gyros that enable you to know where you are and where you're pointing and so you give it send coordinates up there and you pick out your object of interest and gather data so there are some i i think i understand the point of that question. Mm -hmm. There are some telescopes that only observe one, one patch part, of sky. Right, exactly. sure. And they yes. hammer that for, yeah. and they get That's better, it. deeper data. Kepler did that. Right. right. Kepler was one patch of sky looking, there was a lot of stars, but it was still one patch looking for exoplanets. And, because it had to go back looking for variations right. in the you, host star. Right. So one set of data is not good enough. You gotta go back and back and back. And, and then compare you all the compare different Compare all the data. So right, 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 right. So, and let me take this moment. Let's, let's go over just who these people are, okay? So okay. James Webb mm. was the, he was head of NASA during the 1960s. Cool. Yeah. And, but he was, the, I think he was the first person who we named a telescope after that was not a scientist. 
So I think what? there might have been some political stuff going on in the yeah. back in the back room. That's kind of cool though. And I, I think it was like the first James naming Lett. before launch too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Normally you name that? you name it after a person after launch. Yeah. Okay. Just in case it, it right, blows up it, or right, something. Yeah, right. Right. So bad luck. Then like, you, you you blow your name blows up with, right, the, with exactly. the thing. Yeah. Chandra was Axaf for a long time, and Axaf doesn't quite roll off the tongue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. X-ray astrophysics facility or something. X-ray astrophysics Yeah, X-ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it was renamed Chandra after Subramanian Chandra Sekhar, who is a very famous. Famous uh, Indian American Nobel laureate who studied things like white dwarfs and stuff like that. So, Very nice. And he also did. Yeah. Say, I, I, I probably have a book oh, by yeah. Chandra. Yeah. Let me see here. Hold on. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, look at that. Funny. And there it is. Yep. Subrahamanyan Chandra Sekhar. Yep. Uh, radiative transfer. So one of the more brilliant among us who. Okay. I, I'm through. I can't even with you. What? What? I'm just what? done with you. What? What? That, like seriously. What? You got issues? Yeah, I got <laughs> issues. Because I'm not an asshole. Astro... This is the crap. No, crap. This, not crap. It is? But this is what you're reading. Yes. You're sitting around reading this. Yeah. Give me this. Yeah. For a second. No. Here. Give me that for no. a second. What? I can't believe that. Okay, people at yeah. home. Andy, I just open. Andy I'm doing. I'm just gonna wait. Let me. Let me just. Let me just open up. Okay. Here. Here's the. Oh, I, oh, I, oh you're I gonna swear read to us to bed. I'm gonna read. It's not light reading. to you. I'm gonna read to you. Bedtime stories from here. It is. Radio transfer. Exactly. Principles of invariance. What is that? I, I, what is Squiggly that? line. What is that? Squiggly <laughs> line. Squiggly <laughs> line doodle set. Uh, and by the way, okay, so this you're... just goes on for page after page okay, so after Chuck, page of this. Some it, of the pages are just nothing but actual <laughs> equations. Just after <laughs> equation, after <laughs> equation. I have seen Chinese newspapers anxiety. that are easier to understand than this. All right, so, so Chuck, if you write a book like this, you get a telescope named after you. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Unbelievable. So he's wrote several books that really were the definitive word okay. on that on those subjects, and they're still used in graduate school. Yeah, and it was That's a naming contest. Um, we actually had a, a contest for the naming, and it was a teacher and a high school student that picked the name Chandra as the winning entry. Oh, very cool. See, they knew. So yeah, right. they yeah, knew. Clearly, they did didn't... some excellent research and did <laughs> not mind the equations. <laughs> so we got to take a break. Okay, we have more questions coming up Absolutely. on the X Ray Universe with Kim Arkan. <laughs> I say that right. It's you French, did. but I'm Americanizing. Yes. Like you tried to French it as good. I tried to French all calm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 